Hello, thanks for clicking on this video. Every K-pop stan has plenty of opinions on many different things, whether it be an idol, a song, a group, a company, or something that happened in the industry. We all form our opinions as we go, but how many times has it happened that we ended up changing our minds? Sometimes we look back and reflect on what we used to think in the past just to realize that now our thoughts are completely different. In today's video I will talk about the K-pop opinions I've changed my mind on and I wish to take back. I've shared some of them on my channel in the past, while others I have never talked about with you guys and they were just opinions I kept to myself. But now that I have a different opinion on those matters, I'm here to share it with you. Enjoy the video. Kepler has a weak vocal line. This is literally what I thought after the final lineup was finalized. I thought that only Cher Hyun had strong vocals. You can't even blame me because it's not like the girls had the chance to show their full potential during Girls Planet. I had no idea Young Yoon was this good. I didn't even know that Dayeon had such a pretty voice because I had only heard her rapping. I mean I knew Kepler could sing but I overall thought their vocal line was gonna be kinda weak. Now I have changed my mind because everything they have put out since debut just proved me wrong. Like I know that they're not the best vocalists in K-pop or anything, but they're still very good and I feel bad for doubting them. Weekly will be one of the biggest 4th gen groups. Following after school's success I really thought Weekly were gonna become one of the top groups of this generation. It wasn't only me who thought that but also many other K-pop stands. I even thought they were gonna be much more popular than Stacey in the beginning. However I have started to progressively change my mind judging by the direction Weekly took. I personally loved Holiday Party, but we cannot deny it didn't meet the expectations that after school had set. However Weekly still kept their sound and their uniqueness. But unfortunately this uniqueness got lost with their latest comeback. The fresh catchy sound and image they had built disappeared, making them look and sound just like tons of other groups right now. I don't want to be overdramatic, maybe they will blow up again in the future, but as of now I think they have missed the chance to make it to the top. Oh oh is garbage, I had this thought during my first listen, I was like, there's no way this is real, JYP cannot have possibly thought this was a good idea, let me tell you, I thought it was a pile of garbage, but when I listened to it a second time I started to actually love it, I didn't force myself to like it, I had no reason to do so, I started to love it naturally from the second or third time I listened to it and now I think it's a total bop, I'm sorry but I will defend OO with my life I don't care. Yuna should have joined Everglow. I really thought it was for the best honestly. If Yuna joined Everglow they would have gained a massive popularity boost domestically, while Yuna would have gained even more international fans. I thought Everglow and Yuna could do great together since all of them are insane performers and they're also close friends who trained together for years. Yuna joining Everglow seemed like the best decision for me, but now I no longer wish she had debuted with them. Both Yuna and Everglow have a big fan base and many people would have been displeased with her addition to the group. Both Everglow stands and Yuna stands. Not to mention Everglow's line distribution has always been shit and having one popular member joining would have been so detrimental for people like EU and Onda that usually get little to nothing. Not to mention Everglow had been carrying out their group activities for years already and Yuna joining after that long would have probably caused a bit of disruption, especially for the fans. Ultimately I'm so happy seeing both Yuna and Everglow doing their own things and absolutely slaying. I wish to see them collabing together one day, but in the end it was best for them to take two separate ways. I hated when idols lip sync, I thought to myself, what's the point in watching a performance where idols just pretend to sing, I might as well just go watch a dance crew instead, it kinda bothered me when I got into K-pop years ago, but now I couldn't care less, I love it when you can hear idols sing live, but I'm no longer bothered in seeing them lip sync, this is because I acknowledge that pulling off complicated choreos while also singing well can be quite challenging and we cannot assume that idols are always in the best conditions, but I'm especially not bothered because I know that even if they don't sing live they can sing, they're good singers. I always hear groups I stand singing live during encore stages or during special performances and acoustic performances so I know they are great singers and it doesn't bother me if they lip sync. A perfect example could be Espa singing live at Coachella. It's the first time we have actually heard them singing everything live and their vocals were just as good as the studio version. So yeah, even if groups lip sync it doesn't mean they cannot sing and that's why it doesn't bother me. Some of my faves sing live, some of them do not. But I still know that they're all good and capable vocalists and that's what matters. Stacy will only be moderately successful. The hype surrounding them was huge since pre-debut. People were anticipating them a lot because of their producers who had produced some pretty famous and iconic K-pop songs for various artists. So it was natural that people had a lot of anticipation for Stacy. I had no doubt they were gonna be known, but I never thought they would be this successful. It's incredible how much people seem to love their music. Their songs seem to really capture the general public and it's crazy. It's like they become even more successful and more loved with every comeback. I knew they were gonna be successful. But I never thought they would become one of the top 4th gen groups overall and I'm honestly so genuinely happy and proud seeing one of my favorite groups getting all the recognition they deserve. Standing project groups is pointless and I'm never gonna do it. 
When I got into K-pop I remembered seeing people standing temporary groups like IOI and Wanna One. Stans would buy their albums and all of their merch and I was like, what even is the point in spending money on them? They're gonna disband one day and what are you gonna do with all of their stuff? Little did I know I was gonna fall down the rabbit hole and become a survival show lover. I got into Eyes One in 2019 and I instantly adored them. Like I didn't give a fuck they were gonna disband. I loved them too much and I had to stand. Yes it is sad seeing these groups disband but it's amazing seeing which path all of the members end up taking after disbandment and what they end up doing. Speaking of survival shows, I also watched all of Girls Planet and I started standing Kepler and yes, I know I'm gonna get my heart broken but I don't wanna miss out on great groups just because one day they will disband. I'm just gonna enjoy the time I have with them and see what a future holds. I can't get into 4th gen groups. It's funny because I'm literally the biggest 4th gen stan now. But whatever, right when 4th gen started I didn't seem to really vibe with any of the new groups that much. My biggest problem was that it felt so weird standing idols my age. I just wasn't used to it and I didn't think I could ever do it. Things have changed very much because then I found out that I actually related to idols around my age much more than I related to idols that were several years older. I just have much more in common with idols born in the 2000s. I feel like I'm around my friends compared to idols that are something like 10 years older than me. So I definitely have no problem in standing 4th gen groups now. Especially because I really vibe with the music and I'm actually not that interested in 3rd gen groups that much anymore. It's impossible drifting away from a group because of their fandom. Well, it turns out it's very much possible actually. I used to think it couldn't happen just because I hadn't found myself in that situation yet. But it has happened to me a couple of times. Certain fandoms made me drift away from groups. But then I didn't want to let awful stands ruining my experience and I tried my best to ignore them. But it's very hard though. When you stand a group you watch their content and tend to engage with other stands on social media. Of course you can try to surround yourself with positive people but it's pretty easy coming across shitty ones. When you stand a group it's almost impossible not associating with the fandom because most of the group's content you consume is either created by other fans or you have the fans engaging with it. Awful stands can surely ruin the fun and even if you love the group it's sometimes easier just distancing yourself completely so that you won't have anything to do with the fandom. I have never reached the point of unstanding a group and totally distancing myself from it because of the fans. But I can assure you that some fandom made my standing experience a fucking nightmare and I'm not surprised that some people decide to just unstand and call it a day. Well these were all my opinions that I would like to take back. There are more that I have not included in the video so I might make a part 2 in the future. If you enjoyed and wanna see more, then please subscribe to my channel. Bye everyone and thanks again for watching.